Thanks for watching the screencast. The objective of the screencast is learners will be able to simplify exact radicals of any index. So here's a concept that we're going to start this screencast with. It's the concept that the inverse of raising a number to the nth power is finding the nth root of a number. And you probably have some familiarity of this concept for values of n like 2 and 3. We're going to extend that concept in this learning target to any integer n. So here are some examples of the concept. Since 4 to the third power is 64, we would say that 4 is a, we could write a third root, we could write third, a third root of 64. The term we actually often use for the third root is the cube root, the cube root of 64. And here's the way we would write that, the cube root of 64 is 4. So these expressions here are the inverse ideas of this expression here. Here's another example. Since 5 to the 4th power is 625, we say that 5 is a 4th root of 625. And that's read this way. The 4th root of 625 is 5. Two more examples, one straightforward and one rather abstract. Uh, because 2 to the 5th power is 32, we say that 2 is a 5th root of 32. And here's the notation. The fifth root of 32 is 2. Here is the same idea, very abstract. Since a to the nth power, or I guess I should say if a to the nth power equals b, we would say that a is an nth root of b. So for any n we pick, if a to the n power is b, then a is an nth root of b. Or we could say that the nth root of b is a. So the symbol here, we'd read this like the nth root of x, the nth root of x, uh, literally means to find that nth root of whatever the number x is. Uh, the notation, this is this symbol here is called the radical. I hope you know we discussed it a little bit in learning target 22 that whatever the input to this is is called the radicand and there's a special name for the number the n of the nth degree that we're finding and that's called the index of the radical the index essentially tells you what root you're seeking um, it's important for you to know that if there is no index shown, you are to assume that n is 2. Assume n equals 2. Essentially what we're saying here is that if I give you a radical with no index written, it's a square root. It's a second root. Before we try simplifying some nth roots, here's a word of caution. If the index is even and the result is an odd power, you must use absolute value of the result to ensure that the answer is non-negative. Uh, we'll talk about this here in this slide on the video. Uh, I'm sure you'll have questions about this when you get to class and that's okay. The example here, and we'll look at two others, says find the fourth root of n to the fourth. Well, what number or what thing could I raise to the fourth power and get n to the fourth? It's n. Okay. But since that's n to the first and this is an even index, I need the absolute value of n. And here's why. Suppose, say n equaled negative three. Then n to the fourth would be negative three to the fourth which is positive 81. So if I were to ask you to find the fourth root of 81, essentially what we're saying is you don't really know if I'm supposed to give you 3 or negative 3. And it turns out that they're both 
They're both fourth roots of 81. The positive one is what's called the principal fourth root. Um, but this removes the ambiguity. Like, I don't know if n is really 3 or negative 3. I'm going to write absolute value of n so that I don't get caught with the wrong sign. Here are a couple more examples that I hope enlighten this. If I wanted to find the sixth root of x to the 18th power, I would say what thing could I raise to the uh, sixth power and get x to the 18th? And the answer is x to the third power. Because x to the third power to the sixth power is x to the 18th. But since this is an even index with an odd powered result, I need absolute value. By contrast, if I ask you to find the third root, the cube root of x to the 18th, well, what could you raise to the third power and get x to the 18th? It's x to the 6th. I don't need the absolute value here because the index isn't even. It's odd. Okay, here are some examples of the concept we're sharing with you. The first thing we want to find is this root. Uh, what's the index if there's nothing written? It's 2. Yeah, this is just a square root. What is the square root of y minus 6 to the 8th? Well, what could I raise to the second power and get y minus 6 to the 8th? And the answer is y minus 6 to the 4th power. And as a way of checking myself, you know, to check and see if I'm right, I could use the inverse idea from the first slide in this video. I could say if I do take, if I do take my y to the negative the sixth to the fourth power and square it all, what do I get? Well, I get y minus six to the eighth power. If I get back to what I started with, I've got it right for sure. Here's another example. We want the cubed root, the third root of 125 u to the sixth to b to the fifteenth. And sometimes for monomials, for products, I'll think about doing each uh, variable or each coefficient in that monomial kind of separately, each thing. So can I think of a thing that I could raise to the third power to get 125? I think it's 5. Yeah, 5 times 5 is 25. 25 times 5 is 125. Can I think of a thing I could raise to the third power to get u to the sixth? I like u squared u squared times u squared is u to the fourth times u squared is u to the sixth. What about for v v to the fifteenth power? I think there I need v to the fifth. And there we go. I meant to put a box around this one too. Here's another example. I've got the fifth root of 32 x plus 3 to the tenth y to the thirtieth. So I'm looking for Things I can raise to the fifth power that give me each of these factors. Uh, what can I raise to the fifth power to get 32? I think it's 2. 2 to the fifth is 32. What can I raise to the fifth power to get x plus 3 to the tenth? x plus 3 squared. What can I raise to the fifth power to get y to the thirtieth? I believe that's y to the sixth. It's worth pointing out in these last two examples, I didn't need to check and see if anything needed absolute value because the indices were not even. For this one I should, I meant to mention it earlier, for the square root, but I don't need to worry about absolute value because I got an even power for my simplified result as well. It's your turn to try this now. Hit pause, see if you can get some results that you like, or maybe you can't, and that's okay too. When you've got something worked out, hit play and see if you've got it. Before you, before you take off, I'll point out that this first example is a square root. And this one is a fourth root. So on those two, you're going to need to check, and anything that has an odd power in your answer needs absolute value around it. Give it a shot. Let's talk about things. I'm looking for the square root of 100 m to the 8th n to the 6th. I need a number that I can square to get 100. I like 10. I'm looking for a thing that I can square to get m to the 8th. How about m to the 4th? 
I don't need absolute value around that because it has an even power. But what's the thing I could square to get n to the sixth? Well, n to the third works, and actually so does negative n to the third. Because negative n to the third times negative n to the third is n to the sixth also. So to avoid the ambiguity, that's where I need the absolute value around. No, not six, three, n to the third. Presto, there we go. 10 n to the fourth times the absolute value of n to the third. That'll only come into play when you've got an even index in the original problem and the result is uh, something with an odd power. Don't need to worry about that here. I'm looking for the cube root of negative 8, a to the 12th, b plus 1 to the 9th. Is there something I could cube to get negative 8? Yeah, it's negative 2. For odd indices, signs shouldn't be a problem. We can make either option work. What could I cube to get a to the 12th? How about a to the 4th? What could I cube to get b plus 1 to the 9th? b plus 1 cubed is a good answer. There we have it. Last one, we want the fourth root of 81 x to the 12th, y to the 16th, z to the 20th. What could I raise to the fourth power to get 81? 3. What could I raise to x to the 12th power to get, uh, excuse me, what could I raise to the fourth power to get x to the 12th? x cubed is a good answer. Negative x cubed works also, so I need the absolute value of x cubed. What about for y to the 16th? That would be y to the 4th. Don't need absolute value for that one because it's got an even power. For z to the 20th, the absolute value of z to the 5th. And this answer would get you full credit. Um, sometimes students, when they work this problem, they will want to multiply together all of the things that need absolute value and write their answer in one absolute value set of brackets. That's fine too. It's actually a legal move that the product of two things that are both absolute value things can be written as the absolute value of their products. So that's legal also. Either one of those works. Thanks for watching.